Today I'm going to be bending the aileron skin and right now we've got the skin currently flipped over. The special feature, probably the most special feature about the aileron skin is that actually it's 016 aluminum. So you definitely need to, definitely have to be very careful when handling it because 016, that's basically four thicknesses of a sheet of paper and it doesn't take much to damage the skin or much of a scratch to, to, uh, to basically make the skin unusable. Now the, actually this bend will be a little simpler than the other one because all of these bends here I'll be able to do just straight in order. So I'll, uh, since because of this bend here I'll actually be doing a reverse bend and that's actually the way I've got the sheet oriented right now. I've transferred my line over from the back side uh, where I did all my layout and it's currently on the top side. Uh, that one will be 90 degrees and we'll come around for 107 and then of course we'll be going for trying to get a, get a 17 degree bend which like the uh, like the flaps uh, this needs to be needs to come down to 17 degrees or at least as close as possible so that when I attach the ribs uh, you know everything will go ahead and pull down the rest of the way. One thing you do have to be particularly careful of again because this is a, particularly since this is 016 is making sure that this radius doesn't get crushed and actually in one of my tests uh, I did an additional test just to make sure my, all my calculations were correct since it had been a few weeks since I'd uh, done my prior video I actually did crush this a little bit in spite of having the rubber pad inside there essentially the rubber pad it, it sort of crawled up while I was trying to do the outside bin and, and crush this down in a test section uh, everything went just fine uh, with the with the first aileron which I've already bent so we just need to be particularly mindful of this and actually I'll be doing one extra thing in that I've got a uh, piece of uh, quarter inch rubber rubber hosing hose that I'll actually drop in here in addition to uh, uh, to the pad that I was using before so I'll go ahead and get everything set up and, and start doing the bin so we'll go ahead and get our first bin started. I'm just going to provide a little different perspective than what I did on the prior bin. And we'll get going. Uh, one thing I'm not using in this case is the suction cups. Uh, I'd actually, I picked up a piece of 016 with the suction cups and had noticed uh, that it had left a, a little bit of a distortion in the metal, which I didn't definitely didn't like to see. So in this case, I'll be handling everything strictly by hand. There was a slight problem with uh, hitting on the hitting on the back, sort of like I had on the first one, but the 016 is a little bit floppier, so it's a little bit easier to manipulate it compared to before. So here's our first bend completed, uh, our reverse bend here. So we'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and get this piece of metal flipped over, and we'll do our tangent line checks to make sure everything is lining up where I expect it to. Uh, I have intentionally left this end long right here so that uh, I can just go ahead and just trim down to the exact size that I need. So this is the layout that we've got on the back side already. This is uh, where we'll be doing the rest of we'll be doing the rest of our bends from this side. So what I'll do is I'm just going to do my tangent line check, make sure that uh, I didn't have any shifting or anything that may require me to uh, to reposition the uh, reposition any of these additional bends to to try and keep everything straight. Thought I might cover in a little bit more detail how the, how I'm doing this tangent calculation because when I looked at the video before it actually uh, the description didn't seem like it was all that good. So I'll just go ahead and, and run through an example of how I'm doing that. So of course first thing to do is get your straight edge lined up and just have something that's pressing against the end so that you can line that straight edge up to the to the back side. And what we're going to measure is the distance from this tangent line to the tangent line of the uh, 
of the uh, of the bend itself. So in that case, the distance is approximately 87 millimeters, and then we're going to take off three millimeters because this is supposed to be a three millimeter radius on the end here. And I'm just going to note that on here. The actual is 87 millimeters, or is 84 millimeters. And then we'll measure the difference between uh, the tangent line here, which would correspond to, the, to this point here, and the tangent line here that corresponds to this tangent line here. So we have essentially 107 minus 21.6. Okay, that gives me 85.4. So we're actually a little long on this bend. Going by going by this. So I might check it one more time. Make sure that I'm on here good. And take another look. And might be able to call it 88. So that would actually we'll get a magnifying glass. So we'll get a magnifying glass to look at this a little more closely and see. And if anything, I'd probably call it maybe 87.5. So taking three off, that would be like 84.5. Which in that case, then we're talking talking around a millimeter. I mean, like I said, it's uh, definitely a very small error, but uh, definitely I call it close enough in this case. So I'll go ahead and do the measurement on the other side just to make sure everything lines up there. And if everything checks out, then we'll move on to doing this bend here. Okay, I did the calculation on the other side. The measured distance from this tangent line to this tangent line uh, was 86 millimeters, uh, which compared with the calculated of 85.4, you know, essentially a little under a millimeter off. So, yeah, we're skewed a little bit on either side, so there's a slight tilt there, but definitely not enough to worry about. So we'll go ahead and get set up. We'll go ahead and do this bin. This bin will actually be a 107 degree bin. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get our next bin started. I've got the camera positioned at a slightly different angle just to provide a, a little different perspective. Okay, so we'll call that good, pull it, and see what we've got. We're going to attempt a manual press of the aileron skin using a 2x6 that's sitting here down on the floor. And just to see if we make any progress on being able to do that, going ahead and taking a measurement. And we're showing approximately 83 degrees. Uh, I've got my quarter inch uh, rubber cord here and also my rubber pad to uh, try and help ensure that I do not crush my edge down. So we'll give this And let's see what our new measurement is. And we've made a little bit more progress, it looks like. So, OK, 
Okay, we've moved about another 4 degrees, so we're now currently at 94. Going by the measurement here, so that's going to be about 50 degrees, so I mean we're, we moved about 5 degrees. So what we'll do at this point, I think I've taken it as far as I can using the 2 using the 2x6 down here on the floor, so uh, we'll go ahead and put this in the brake and see if we can compress it just a little bit more with an outs using an outside bend. Got our aileron set up here, I've got my pads, my quarter inch cord, and sometimes I have problems with the, with the rubber padding trying to slide up a little bit, so actually I've taken a couple of my uh, meter sticks, my long 2 meter long meter sticks, and lay those in just to provide a little bit of downforce to try and keep that pad from riding up while I'm pressing it. So we'll go ahead and give it a try here. Okay, we're going to go back and give this another press. I said it looks like this side managed to get down a little bit further than this side, so we're going to go ahead and just press this manually, press this side a little. Okay, I think that's about as far as we're going to be able to get it <clears throat> between manual pressing and also pressing on the pressing on the outside. So. What I've got to do now, I've got a little bit, of, little bit of trimming I've got to do right here, and then we'll do a test fit up against the, uh, against the aileron test rib and see what kind of results we got. As I was inspecting the aileron, I did notice there was a slight crease that had appeared right here. It's actually not that bad. I suspect what happened, I have problems from time to time with this rubber cord uh, riding up a little bit. I think it may have rid up some, and, and when I was pressing down, it sort of impress the uh, the shape of this in there but we're still not really sunk as far as uh, as far as the part goes first off I mean it's really not that bad uh, but on top of that uh, I intentionally lit I intentionally make my made the flaps and the ailerons both just a little bit long in case there are some problems uh, so in this case actually the edge of the aileron actually goes to here but then also you trim back an additional hundred millimeters down to here so what I'll do to you know not have to worry about having this kind of defect in my in the aileron, I'll go ahead. I went ahead, you know, mark the mark the area with the problem. Just put a note on here that I want to use this on the right, and of course, just a little indicator to show that that I want to you know trim off off trim off from here, which I won't do this trimming until I'm actually ready to uh, attach the wing or attach the the aileron to the wing itself. So you know, it's just one of those things that that uh, you know just sort of learn by doing that you know when you're making something like this you know maybe add an extra 20 or 30 millimeters and also you know even if you do have a problem unless it just happens to be right in the middle you know quite often little things like this with just a little bit of uh, uh, careful thinking about what additional operations you may need to do you may be able to just you know excise the, the mistake out altogether without having to scrap the entire part. What you're looking at here is a test fit up of the sample rib that I've done for the aileron and checking how it fit, how everything fits up with the with the aileron skin that I've done so far and overall the fits looking pretty good got a little bit of a gap right here but actually that's I think that probably should be there just because there will eventually be a uh, be a hinge sticking in there so there should be you know roughly around a sixteenth of an inch gap also I think this uh, rib here isn't quite at 90 degrees as well so uh, I'm not too not too concerned about that uh, I'm leaving this part a little long for the moment until I get around to installing all the ribs into the aileron then once I'm sure the final how everything's going to lay out then I'll go ahead and draw my final line draw a final line along here and, and do my final trimming for this before installing the hinge so that's all I will cover on this uh, It'll probably be a while before I get around to flaps and ailerons again. 
Uh, the next task I will be focusing on probably over the next month or so is getting the getting my uh, gantry set up. Uh, two more gantry set up similar to what I've got for lifting the wing skin, but in this case it'll be for lifting the entire wing. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask.